in business in the Mesilat Yesharim. It says, Amna Masha Sarik Ladam Yoter Iun Melachara Bahu Tarovata Isur. Yanushal of Amim Hadam Holech Vosemitzvah Lishma Mamash Shekar Kazar of Yushal Shemaim. He says, The most thing, so Tahara, just to review, this chapter in the Mesila, we're trying to purify our minds and hearts, the motive, right? Perishut was purified. We're trying to define the difference between Perishut and why this is a higher rung on the ladder towards heaven. The answer is like this. Perishut is making sure all your actions are holy. But now we're going higher and saying even all your motives should be purely what? Lishma. For the sake of your Father in heaven. Not for fame, not for glory, not like that case center that wants to make people <laughs> for money. Not to be on the front page of the New York Times. For, you know, it's disgusting actually the rabbis that do that. You know, they're just like, oh, I'm America's rabbi. I want to just, it's like a whole business. They made the Torah into like some self-promotion which is rather distasteful. So what he's saying here is, we, why are you doing the mitzvah? Because you want a pat on the back <coughs> and everybody tells you, oh, you're such an amazing leader? Or are you doing the mitzvah because you want to bring nachat ruach, pleasure and delight to your father in heaven. So Tahara says, dig deeper to your motives, into your subconscious, which I've been listening so much to Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, and that was the Chidush of the Muslim movement, right? That we have to, Torah is psychology, psychology is Torah. And sometimes we fool ourselves that we're Lishma. But in our deepest echelons and layers of our subconscious, we're doing it for f f fame and glory. You understand? So he says, the Ramchal says, one example of making sure that you're totally lishma is that you shouldn't be doing it for people to give you a five-star review and sing your praises. Or for the money. Listen, two Rosh Hashivas could go give a shiur. But are you just doing it? Which means here, everybody needs to make a living, right? So is the Rav, the Rebbe, the Mashkiach, right? The non-profit Jewish public servant. Is he doing it just for the money? Or is he is he's saying, I wish I couldn't, I wish in, in a perfect world... I wouldn't take money, but I need to live. I have a wife and kids. I have a responsibility. Right in the ketubah, a man needs to be a man. I'm not a coward. And support his wife and kids. But what's the motive, right? What's the driving force pushing you to go give the shir or to do the mitzvah? Is it the money to get your salary, your paycheck, or is it because of the mitzvah, right? It's a world of a difference, by the way, the way the Mesil Sharma is saying it. Understand? We're going very deep into holy things here. This is not for the meager fate of yeah, fate of our, you know, we're going. So I want to give you an example that why somebody in our door had Racha Kodesh, Rav Steinman, the God of Lador, and give you a beautiful story that my Mashkiach and Erisol told me about Rav Steinman. The person that replaced Rav Shach in the yeshiva world as the Godel Ador in Eretz Yisrael was Rav Arya Leib Steinman, which I had the zechus to meet on a few occasions. He was fire of Taira. I don't know, did you ever meet him? But he was very stark. What? Our yeshiva took us to see him. Yeah, so Rav Steinman, the fascinating story. Fascinating story. He was a Rebbe in Panovich. And... Uh, so listen, listen to this story. This is trying to show that Rav Steinman was... I want to give you a living example of what the Ramchal is talking about through this story. Because Rav Avadia says, Lo It's so important to learn 
the biographies of Gedolim. Go be Meshamish Gedolim. Again, this is my new motive in life. My number one lesson I want to teach all of you. Even if you know more uh, Torah than Rav Ovadia and Rav Chaim Kanievsky combined, but you don't have Shimush Tam Dechachamim. You don't see the Gedolim, the Rosh Hashivas, the, the leaders of our generation, actually practicing the Torah. And you taking them, for example, on a ride, and you practically seeing how they carry out the Torah, your Torah, I don't want to say is worthless, but it's very low. You're definitely not on the high, you know. Because Gadol Shimusha Yaisa right? We always say that there's Yehoshua, we learned in last week's parsha, never left the feet of his Rebbe. Because there's so much to gain from Moshe, right? 40 days and 40 nights, he didn't go to back and play golf in the Sinai Desert. He stood by the foot. So here's an amazing story with Rav Steinman. Rav Steinman, during one of the, I think it was the, um, yeah, it was the War of Israeli Independence, right? One of, one of the major Israeli wars, obviously the economy went down the drain, right? And the yeshiva didn't pay him. So guess what? For a few months, and he had many children, he had to suffer, and he, you know, his children every night ate potatoes. It was a really, you know, bread and potatoes. Or uh, potatoes or bread, bread and potatoes. Finally, after like 10 months or 6 months, a long period of time, the yeshiva came and paid his every single thing. So you know what Rav Steinman did? Look what integrity our giants, Torah giants have. He gave back all the money. They fought with him. They said, you have to take the money. What, we, don't, we don't want to embezzle your uh, salary, your wages. He said, listen, why do I work so I could feed my wife and kids? I fed my wife and kids for Shabbos even we didn't have meat, right? During this war period. So why should I take the money now? I don't need the money. The yeshiva could use them. And he, he, he under no circumstances would take the money. And then if anybody that knew Rav Steinman, I met him on a few occasions... His no was a no and his yes was a yes. There was no convincing him otherwise. I mean, you were dealing literally with fire. So if you would have pushed too hard, you'd get burnt. That's, that's, that's what Ramachal is saying. You understand? Listen, everybody needs to get paid. But you, you, you saw that, you know, he said, I, w- I, may, I, I was able to get by without the money. Okay, from now on, I'll get paid. But during those months, I don't need, I need, I don't need my back pay. Right? So he says, Sometimes, this by the way is the yard side of the Chidushe Harim. So I was, I've been listening a lot to Rabbi Lopiansky about. Yeah, the, Chidushe Harim was the Ger Rebbe, no? Yeah, he was the founder of Ger Chasidus. He's the grandfather of the Sfas Emes. Wow. So the Chidush Harim was the Talmud of the Kotzke Rebbe. And in their Hasidus, it was very... This was like a major thing. This was like a major foundation. Also, overall, it's known that of many of the Hasidim, the Ger Hasidim are known to be the biggest Talmud of Chacham. Yeah, yeah, but this is a different aspect. One of, their, one of their major, major things they would focus on is, are your motives totally uh, Shem Shamayim? Which means that um, the Ramchal is saying it here. And it, it, it's beautiful because I was a little bit wary of it. But it's something that Hasidus demands of a person. He says, even if you're happy in your heart. And now because of the compliments you're getting for your mitzvah. You're more diligent and more meticulous. And doing more with a fine comb, that's not tahara, right? If, which means if you're on such a high closeness to Hashem, you're totally 110% L'Shem Shemaim, right? External people's compliments or non-compliments are not going to make it or break it or affect you in any way. You understand? We're, we're going really high madregas here, Shani, right? We're going very high madregas. And this is brought down in the Gemara of Adazara, that one of the reasons that Rabbi Hananiah ben Taradion's daughter was um, 
punished. That one time she was walking in front of the noble uh, Roman officers and they said, oh, this woman, this girl, this young lad walked so beautifully and classy. And then she started walking even more like classy. So she started being more careful how she walked in front of the officers. He says, obviously, this is not in the realm of sitkus anymore, right? You, right? We, we want to read, we want to make something clear to everybody. This is all extra credit, this part of the Mesilat Yesharim and Am. You understand? This is to be a pious person, a Baba Sadiq. So he says, what are you going to tell me that now that she they complimented her and then she was more careful. He says, of course, in the realm of being a righteous person, this is like, you know, she, she, she's kosher, right? She's walking like a modest little girl, but now she's walking even more modest and a more fancy and sophisticated, you know, way. He says, but if you want to be a tahor and a complete tahor, right? Totally pure in the eyes of Hashem, the Gemara in Menachot um, 76 tells us that the most, what, what um, for the Korban Mincha, right? For the flour pancake Korban, 13 times they would refine it. What's the ethical lesson in that? That if you want to be pure and go on the altar of Hashem, sometimes 13 times you need to and this is why I love that I got an 88 percentile on the auditing on the CPA exam. Because really, Musa is internal auditing, right? He's saying sometimes 13 times you need to question yourself. Am I doing this 100% for the sake of Hashem? Is it totally refined, my mitzvah? Or is there a little bit for myself, for my ego, right? For people to compliment me, for people to pay me more money or, you know... To, there's no zikh. In this madriga of the, the Mesilas Yesharim, we're getting to angelic levels where the human ego doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters in my life is to make my Father in Heaven happy. Not me happy, right? And it says, So he says, sometimes what Tahara means is every angle you're trying to be L'Shem Shemaim, right? And like Rabbi Saul Salanter says, and the whole Kiddush of Musa is to even go in your subconscious and make sure that's even for the sake of Shamaim and totally pure and refined. So one more, one more, we're just today we're just gonna do one more um paragraph and then we'll call it a day. We'll go on a little bit on the shorter version today. And again, he wants to say, listen, I don't want to make people depressed and say, if you're not on this high, 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 lofty, angelic level, you're rejected by Hashem. Hashem still loves you the same because we're human, right? Listen, guys, what's going on here is that since we have a soul, we have this unlimited capability of doing amazing things, right? So, doesn't mean we're coming to make people depressed and say, if you're not so perfect, you're rejected by Hashem. No. So he says, even if you're not on this 13 times, you know, auditing yourself and from every angle and nook and cranny, making sure that you're only doing it for the sake of God, of course, even if you're not, you could be a tremendous sadiq, right? We want to reiterate that because... Um, Chacham Ben Sion Abashol says, any Musa that makes you depressed has lost its whole value, right? Musa, we're here to elevate one another. You understand? So the Ramchal is recognizing that and say, you are going to get a tremendous, unimaginable amount of reward, and especially one that reads the Nefesh HaChayim. This is a very big thing by him, right? That... As long as you're doing the mitzvah to your best of your ability, right? And you're doing it according to halacha, right? Not putting your tefillin here, but you're tefillin, you're, you're not, you know, you're putting... But here we're just, we're trying to go to the... These are trying to get into the clouds, 
so to speak, right? Yeah. We're, we're going really, really high up. And we're, go, we're going closer to the angels than us mere mortals, right? So he says, <laughs> The Ramchal is saying, I'm telling you the most ideal and perfect way of doing the mitzvah, right? And I've said this many times, the Hebron and Rosh Hashiva, which some argue was the closest clone of the altar of Slabatka, says the reason why we still have to continue past this part and learn these parts of the Misal Sisharim is to know, right, if we're not aware that sky is the limit, then we'll never, right? Listen, some people have the wherewithal and the determination to go to the top of the ladder. Some people would, Stay at the middle, and they'll still be a very big sadik, right? But we just want to broaden our horizons and know, hey, there is such a kosher and legit going up as high as you can, right? And this is like this is not keneged halach, right? This is part of our Jewish theology. This is kosher. That of course, is striving for perfection, right? We're striving. So that's Ramchal is telling you. I'm trying to give you the most ideal manifestation of a mitzvah. Doesn't mean if you don't do it this way, it's undesirable and Hashem's going to reject your mitzvah and you're not going to get rewarded. No, you will. It just means you won't be at that higher level. Right. It, it means that your mitzvah is not necessarily perfect. Right? Which is something we and, all and, have and to strive for. Exactly. We all have to strive for. Exactly. Listen, it may take a lifetime to get to this madriga, but at least you should know this madriga exists. Yeah. And this is something... Uh, ideal, and this is something desirable, and this is something we should strive for. And he says, this is, if you really are in love with God, this is something you should strive for. Because we want to call a spade a spade, right? To thyself be true. So, obviously, <laughs> the Ramchal is not saying something that's impractical. He's just saying, listen, if you want to do a mitzvah in the most perfect way and you really love Hashem, then you have to do it 110% L'Shem Shamay. Consciously and subconsciously. This is already holding, the Ramchal is telling us another Chiddush in this. And that is saying, only somebody that's in love with Hashem could be at this Madriga. You understand? It's a matter of love, Right? Listen, you could be a perfect sadik. You could do an amazing A plus mitzvah, right? Even if you're not at this level, mm -hmm. but we're talking about already love, and when love, when love is in the air, you're you're so selfless. You understand that the only thing you, only person you want to make happy is who? God. God. So he says, He says, obviously, step by step, the further you get away from this ideal, the further perfect is your mitzvah, right? So like we said last time, if you're doing it 110% just for fame and glory, that is actually really bad. Right? So it's, you have to understand, that's why I think Hashem, I want to say Yichidosh tonight in the Mishra Lashishan. That's why perhaps that Hashem gives us the opportunity to do one mitzvah a thousand different times or a hundred thousand different times. Because in those that lifetime of doing the mitzvah many different times, you've got many different... Hopefully one of those times, you'll be in such a good and positive and jolly, merry, uplifting mood that you'll do it perfectly. You understand? But again, we have to understand that this is some basic tenet of Judaism that right? This is not some extra, right? He's just saying that once you're on the madriga of love of God, then you want to do everything so perfect because you want to make it your Father in Heaven so happy. So that's what David says in Tehillim 76, 73. He's alluding to this that he says some. I want to be heavenly rather than earthly, which means I want to do my mitzvahs, right? I'm yearning and hoping to get to the highest part of this ladder that I'm doing it 13, from 13 different angles and subconsciously and consciously, I only want you, God. It's not about me. I'm totally selfless. This is not about my fame and glory and my pocket for me to get richer, right? 
And again, he says this concept in Tehillim 19. He says, Serufaim ratecha me'od vavatecha. He says, your mitzvahs, just the perfect example of this that Ramchal is bringing from Tehillim, which means sometimes, listen, you have 24 karat gold, you have 14 karat gold, you have, right? It's gold. So any mitzvah you do is gold, right? But if the person is doing it 110% only for his own um, selfish reasons, it becomes like two karat gold, you understand? As the more you do it selflessly and for your love of God, it gets more pure gold. You understand? That's a beautiful mashal the Ramchal is bringing. It says, of course, if people are looking to have the thing, again, this goes back to, I think, the most important part of the Misil Sisharm for me. Misil Sisharm says many places that people want the best and most luxurious Gucci bag. You idiot, you imbecile, you, you silly goose. Something that is may get stolen and deteriorate. You want it to be perfect. Now, mitzvah, see, that's what Ramchal is saying. He's saying, for sure we should be more meticulous. And th- this mitzvah is going to be an angel that c- you create, right? Through this, And it's going to be your olam haba forever and ever. So why not want to put more meticulous this than your jewelry, your silly jewelry, which could get stolen? Especially in LA, which has become the crime capital of the world. Umash Amar... That's why in, in, in Tehillim 12 it says, it says Hashem's words are pure and they should be more refined, seven times more refined than, than silver. Which means if, if you want the best jewelry for yourself, then the ultimate jewelry that you're going to wear forever in the Olam Haba is what? Your mitzvot. So why not do them 100% only? That's why, by the way, the minag of the Sfaradim, the Sfaradim were very makbid to do their mitzvot in secret. Because when, when you do it in public, there's this great danger of what? Doing it for fame and glory. Hashem should help us to get to the highest levels of purity. Amen, King